May the words of our mouths, the my, bleh, one more time. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of your hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Sometimes life is hard and it can take a toll on us. We look around and we see that there are communities and families broken and hurting. Neighbors rise up against neighbors. Accusations are made. Gossip spreads. Criticism rises and arguments prevail about who is right and who is wrong and who is to blame. For many of us, the struggles of our everyday lives, the worries and the concerns that we carry for ourselves, for our families and friends, for our community and even for the world can feel overwhelming. They can sometimes feel like too much to bear. And when we add to this the continuing presence and threat of the COVID virus, an adversary that is relentless and determined, we may find ourselves tired and weary and longing for relief. We may find ourselves relating to the people of fifth century Israel. In today's passage from Nehemiah, we meet them as they gather in the town's center. They have called a meeting, and they're directing Ezra to bring and read the scrolls of the Law of Moses, their Torah. Earlier chapters in Nehemiah tell us that theirs is a fractured community. It's a community where people are at odds with one another and where injustice is commonplace. Life for them has been difficult. They have felt distanced from Jerusalem and from God and from one another. And so here they have come, downtrodden and seeking hope and restoration that only God can bring. Now, Nehemiah is a faithful public servant of the people. What he has witnessed in his life grieves him deeply. Born and raised in the time of exile and devastation, he knows all too well that the threat of violence is ever near. Jerusalem's wall has crumbled, the city is in disrepair, and hope seems lost. And although he is the optimistic and the determined prophet, ever sure of his calling, to bring God's people out of their despair. His enemies and his foes at every turn call him out. They condemn him. They condemn the guidance that he gives to the people. They criticize and they judge him and they ridicule him. And for Nehemiah, it feels personal. He's tired. And he's weary. And so in his grief and sorrow for the plight of Jerusalem and for Israel, Nehemiah turns to God with weeping, with fasting, with praying. And then, rising up himself, he calls to the people. And he invites them to step up and to do their part in bringing forth restoration. He invites them to come hand by hand, person by person, to add a stone to the crumbling wall, to see that when they gather together in community and each one takes a part, that restoration can come, that there is hope. And so they came. They built, and then they gathered they gathered for some renewal from God's word. Now the scriptures tell us 
that the people were attentive to Ezra as Ezra stood above them. And that as Ezra opened the scrolls and he blessed the Lord, the people stood up and raised their hands up and gave an amen to receive that word. With the reading of each text, and imagine, can you imagine sitting here and listening to the first five books of the Old Testament? And, and interpretation. So be with, you can imagine, right? With each reading of the text, they're reminded of who they are. They are reminded of their journey out of Egypt, their journey through the wilderness, their long struggle to try to find the promised land. They are reminded of God's law and their covenant. And with each story, they also become acutely aware that the promised land of the path is no longer theirs. And with deep regret for their faithlessness to God, for the breaking of their covenant with God, they weep. We too come and gather to hear God's word. We, like those who came before us, come with all that we are, all of our burdens, all that troubles us, and we come listening for what God is saying to us, hoping that in God's words we might find encouragement, we might find hope, we might find assurance that all shall be well. The locals of Nazareth came hoping for the same thing when Jesus taught that day in the temple. As he took the scroll and he unrolled it and he found the verses from Isaiah and then read them aloud, they listened intently to his words and his speaking. Words that spoke of the Spirit's anointing, of good news and of release, of restoration and freedom. And after he rolled it back up, he sat down, as was the custom. And Luke tells us all eyes were fixed on him in anticipation. Before them is Jesus, the one anointed by the Spirit at baptism, and who, in the presence of the Spirit in the wilderness, weathered that storm, and the one who is one of their very own. He is one of them. Not only has he taught them from the Torah, on this day he has offered a new interpretation. Today, he said, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. What do you think captivated them so? What might God have been trying to say to them? And what might they have heard in those words as Jesus spoke, both the words of Isaiah and his proclamation? When the weariness of our world feels too much, when the challenges and frustrations and irritations overtake us and our sadness overwhelms, when we wish, in the words of Rodney King, that we could all just get along, it is the word of God that we need to hear. It is the word of God that feeds us. Words that are spoken to a particular people in a particular time and place inside of a particular context that by God's grace still have relevance to you and me today. They are words that remind us of who we are and that guide us. They are words of hope and encouragement and promise Words like those found in our readings today 
are spoken by a fifth century prophet and a first century savior and a beloved apostle who comes to tell the world and those who believe the importance of being in unity with one another. The importance of recognizing that it is in our unity that we go forth and do good in the world and that each part of the community matters. Each part of the community has their place and cannot be cast aside. Paul reminds us that in turning towards God and trusting God, we can remember who we are and that we can find hope and that together in unity with one another, one body of Christ, that we, we will make it through. These are words that we in the 21st century need to hear. They are words that feed us. So today, my friends, let's claim them as our own. Let's claim God's words and let's embrace and garner from what God has spoken all the goodness, all the hope, and all the possibility that are found in those words. Let us hear in the words of the prophet encouragement and permission to celebrate, to take God's joy and use it for our strength. Let us rejoice with the psalmist who tells us that the heavens are rejoicing at the glory of God. Let us take the words of Paul and go forward with one another side by side, praising God, sharing God's word, doing God's work. Let us take heed and in our hearing of Jesus' reading from Isaiah. Let us give thanks for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who has anointed each of us, sending us out into the world like Jesus was sent. The Holy Spirit who calls us forth to embody the good news and to be people who bring good news to the poor, to be people who release captivity, to be people who give sight to those who cannot see, to be people who help to free people from the oppression. Now we might think when Jesus proclaims the words of Isaiah and claims them as his calling, that he's not speaking to us. We might not think of ourselves as poor or blind or oppressed, or captive. And yet, Jesus has come for all people. Not just the poor, but the poor in spirit. Not just the blind, but those who fail to open their eyes and see. Not just those who are pushed down or held captive in prisons, but those of us who are often held captive by our own fear, our own anger and resentment, our own sadness. Jesus came for us. God redeems God's people. And this is good news for us. There is good news to be found in God's word. And so let us come this day. Let us offer to God all that we are, whatever that is. And then let us remember and cling to and embrace the words of Nehemiah and Ezra and the Levites, the words spoken to generations before us that still are relevant and resonate with us today. This day 
is holy to the Lord our God. So do not mourn or weep. Go, celebrate, eat, drink, and share what you have with others. For this day, this Sabbath, is a holy day to the Lord. So do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. It is given for you, and it is always, always there. Amen.